It's about time I got to covering the Sphinx's riddles in Dragon's Dogma 2, and so in this video I'll be taking you step by step through the entire game of Wit's Quest, giving you all sorts of pointers and tips so that you can hopefully breeze through it. Before you begin, you're going to want to bring a handful of fairy stones and at least one port crystal to make this a heck of a lot easier. You'll also want to sleep at one of your houses or at an inn before you leave so that you have a backup save if anything goes wrong. To find the Sphinx and trigger the game of Wit's Quest, You'll need to start at the checkpoint Rest Town and go north until you reach the Ancient Battlegrounds dungeon. At the top of the destroyed castle, in the back, is a cave, and following this eventually leads you to the Mountain Shrine, where you'll find the Sphinx just chillin'. For those who haven't been yet, here's how you can get there starting from the outside of the Ancient Battlegrounds castle. Once you have arrived at the Mountain Shrine, definitely place down that port crystal so that you never have to do that run again. Here you'll have to solve 5 of the Sphinx's riddles. You can fail only once, any more and the quest will be ruined. Riddle number 1 is a Riddle of Eyes, and for this you'll need to enter into the cave nearby and retrieve a special item called the Sealing File. This cave is marked on your map and it's literally just right down the stairs from where the Sphinx is standing so you can't miss it. If you don't mind a little bit of exploring, you'll find some decent items in here, but if you only care about solving the riddle, when you first enter the cave, just look up and behind you. You'll be able to climb up to this chest and get the riddle item. Hand it over to the Sphinx, and that's riddle number one solved. After each riddle, you'll get access to a chest behind the Sphinx, and I'll make sure to show the rewards for all ten of them. For the second riddle, Riddle of Madness, you'll need to deliver an NPC that you've either romanced, have max affinity with, 
or you can just take the easy way and use your main pawn. Pick them up and drop them off in front of the Sphinx and interact with her to solve this riddle. You can deliver more than one NPC to her for this riddle, but if you do, all of your quote lovers will start fighting each other until only one remains. If you're wondering the best way to get an NPC here, I'll show you how to do that in one of the later riddles when it is actually required. Riddle number three is Riddle of Wisdom. For this, you will need to deliver the Sphinx a pawn that is named one of the following names. Those would be either Sphinx Father, Sphinx Mother, or Sphinx Parent. To find one with a name exactly like this, visit a town's Riftstone, and when you examine it, choose the option View Linked Riftstones in the menu. Then select Riftstone of the Fellowship. You should then see several pawns spawn in around you with these exact names. Hire any one pawn that has a name that exactly matches the ones I have listed here. Once they've joined your team, you can return to the Sphinx and drop the pawn off in front of it, just like you did with your main pawn earlier. This will complete the third riddle. That was certainly worthwhile. For riddle number four, Riddle of Conviction, you're given the opportunity to duplicate any item for free that you currently have in your inventory. As I covered in my guide for the Jadeite Orb quest, you can use this riddle to duplicate the orb to get the happy ending for everyone. Personally, I decided to save this duplication for a port crystal because they're much more valuable and rare, but you're free to duplicate anything you want. As long as you duplicate one item, the riddle will be complete. For the last riddle in this location, Riddle of Rumination, your task is to travel to the spot where you picked up your very first Seeker's token. I have to imagine that for any of you that like exploring and didn't just strictly follow the main quest, your first token would have probably been in the northern region of the game, not too far from Border Watch Outpost. If you know the general area but are having trouble locating it, you can use the trickster's perk called Detection, which will alert you of nearby tokens. The first token you picked up will look exactly the same as a regular Seeker's token when you see it on the ground, but upon picking it up, it will drop as the Finder's token. Once you have this, you can return to the Sphinx and present it to her to solve the riddle. Now that you've correctly solved the first five riddles, all of the locked chests behind the Sphinx, except for the big golden one, should be open, and the Sphinx will then proceed to fly away to her next shrine. At this point, you can pick up your port crystal because you'll no longer need to come back here. Before you start the next set of riddles, absolutely make sure to sleep at an inn or one of your houses. This could be right after you teleport or walk home from the mountain shrine, or preferably right after you reach the Sphinx's next location. The journey to get to this second location is not something you're going to want to redo if you fail, so having that backup in save is very nice. Also, the next set of riddles, while not that much more difficult, has a lot of opportunities for mistakes. You don't get any second chances on this part, a single failed riddle will mean a failed quest, and it would really really suck if your backup save was like a full real day ago and you had to do everything over again. Not that I would know what that's like or anything. Oh, and once you head back to a town and rest, I would recommend changing your class to Archer. In one of the future riddles you'll receive an arrow, and this can only be used by archers. You can still complete the quest on any other class, it's just going to be a lot easier if you can take advantage of this special arrow. The next location is called the Frontier Shrine, and it can be found southwest of the Checkpoint Rest Town. To get here, you'll need to traverse up a cliff, cross over the waterfall to the right, and then cross back over it to the left, continue climbing up and go through a cave, and then keep going up the mountain until you get to a chimera guarding a side path with a pillar and some rubble blocking it. Finding the Sphinx here at Frontier Shrine is counted as solving riddle number 6, Riddle of Reunion, which unlocks one of the chests as soon as you arrive. This chest will give you 100,000 gold. The order in which the final four riddles of this quest are given to you is completely random, so I will be presenting them in the order that I received them, but depending on the order you get, you might need to use the timestamps in the description to skip around. 
The seventh riddle I was presented with was called Riddle of Recollection, and this is where the Sphinx asks you how many riddles you've solved so far, and you'll show the number to her by bringing those statues she just spawned in and placing them in front of her. Even if you failed to correctly solve one of the riddles from the first set of five, the game will still count that failed riddle as a solved riddle. So everyone who gets to this point will at least start with five. Then just simply look behind the Sphinx and see how many chests you've opened. Add the amount of open chests to the already five riddles solved and you'll get your total. For me, it was six since I had solved the previous five at Mountain Shrine, plus the one that gets auto-completed when you get to Frontier Shrine. The eighth riddle I was presented with was called Riddle of Futility. For this one, the Sphinx will spawn a vase, and your job is to carry this all the way to an NPC in Bak Batal without breaking it. But yeah, that's, that's kind of impossible, we're not going to do it that way. To get around this, we're going to travel to a place called Mural Byway in Bak Batal. Here you will run into Moritz, and you can initiate some dialogue with him about the Sphinx if you want, but you really only need to just kidnap him. This can be done by way of sealing file, which I will show in the next step, or you can simply pick him up and use a fairy stone while you're carrying him. This will teleport both of you back to the shrine. Drop him near the vase, and that is riddle completed. In the world were you thinking? The ninth riddle I got was the riddle of differentiation. At the beginning of this, the Sphinx will present an NPC and request that you bring him here. The character she shows will either be this guy, or this guy. Yeah, they are pretty much identical, but you can differentiate them by whether or not they have a scar on their chest. So if the Sphinx shows you one with a scar, that's the one you need to bring her. Both of the NPCs are found relatively close to each other, one roams around the streets of the checkpoint rest town, and the other can be found just past the gate on your way to Batal. When you find the one you need, you can either use the fairy stone trick again where you pick them up and teleport with them, or if you still have your sealing file, you can use this item from within your inventory near the NPC and it will suck them into the bottle, allowing you to run around with them in your pocket. Once you return to the Sphinx, find the bottle in your inventory and select the break option to release the NPC. You can use this sealing file during the vase riddle as well if you wish, but it can only be used once. Speak to the Sphinx, and if you kidnap the right one, you'll pass this test. My tenth riddle was the riddle of contest, where the Sphinx spawns in a soldier that you have to kill. The catch is that you'll also be given a ring that makes you do zero damage. This will be automatically equipped on you as soon as you exit from speaking to the Sphinx. To defeat the soldier easily, pick him up and just chuck him off the map. After you've been declared the winner, then you can and should remove the ring. At this point, you've completed all 10 riddles, and if you approach the Sphinx, she'll say goodbye and begin her departure. The second you're done with her dialogue, you should immediately start attacking her from behind, or at least near the back legs. This will trigger a boss fight with the Sphinx, and you'll have to kill her to get the final rewards. If she escapes, the quest will be complete, but you won't get access to her golden chest. If you switch to the archer class, then once you trigger her boss fight, equip your unmaking arrow and fire it at the boss to instantly kill her. You should be good to fire it at any part of her, but I tried to avoid her head or chest as an extra precaution, because if you're fighting her on another class and you damage her quote, human features, like her head or her chest, she will say that you failed and fly off. So if you're on another class, stick to damaging only her back or her back legs. This means you'll probably have to tell your pawns to wait, or in the absolute worst case scenario if they don't listen to you, you might have to chuck them off the map, so that they don't intervene and fail it for you. This is precisely why I suggested being Archer, because you can avoid all that mess by only having to fire one shot. When the Sphinx dies, she'll drop a few bundles of 2000 gold, and a key that opens her golden chest. Inside you'll find an Eternal Wakestone. This is a one-time use item that has the ability to revive multiple people at once, unlocking the achievement Reaper's Scorn. The item you earned earlier called Whimsical Daydream is a weapon for the trickster and it has a very unique function. Every hit on an enemy rewards you with some amount of gold. Most hits will give you either 10 or 100 gold, but getting a thousand isn't terribly uncommon either. 
There's even a rare chance that you can get 50,000 gold from an attack. It's kind of an interesting way to make some money quickly if you don't want to sell a bunch of things, but the weapon itself is not really useful outside of that. Anyway, that's pretty much it for the Sphinx quest. If there's any tips you guys want to add, feel free to leave them in the comments for others to see. Thank you for watching, and I will see you all in the next video.